Hello everyone from the internet and welcome to my video. So today, I will be discussing with you an intriguing terror store that was mentioned in the Jurassic Park novel but never made an appearance in any of the Jurassic Park movies. This pterosaur is also known as a Cyrodactylus. So, without making you guys wait furthermore, let's get right into it. When you picture a flying reptile, the first thing that comes to your mind is probably a flying pterodactyl, arguably the most famous of the flying reptile. Yet, there are actually a number of species of winged reptiles starting as early as the Triassic period 228 million years ago. These winged reptiles were known as pterosaurs because they all belong to the biological order known as pterosauria. The pterodactyl is a member of this group. When writing Jurassic Park, Michael Crichton chose to include one of the lesser known species of pterosaurs. He wrote about the species called Cyrodactylus, which is a larger, fish-eating cousin of the Pteranodon. The aviary is a cage pen where engine housed pterosaur species, because the engine scientists assumed that pterosaurs lived near flowing water, as their diet consisted of fish. The cage was built over the Isla Nublar River. A Cyrodactylus aviary first appeared in the Jurassic Park novel. The concept was later ultimately used in Jurassic Park 3 with the Pteranodon cage. Now, let's see the scientific description of this flying reptile. Cyrodactylus atrox was discovered in the Santana Formation in Brazil. It was described and named in 1985 by Leonardo G. and Borgominaro G. Cyrodactylus lived during the early Cretaceous period, about 115 million years ago. The first part of its name, Sierra, is a reference to the Brazilian state. Dactylus stands for finger in Greek, while the finer part atrox means fearful in Latin. It had a 5.5 meter or 18 foot wingspan and it was around 33 pounds or 15 kilograms in weight. Basically, it was as heavy as a German Shepherd. It is currently the only known species classified with the genus Cyrodactylus, as it is a unique group of large pterosaurs. Cyrodactylus had a crestless skull that could reach a length of 57 centimeters in the Jurassic Park novel. The Cyrodactylus lived inside the Isla Nublar aviary in the book. They were let out into the aviary as to acclimate them to the enclosure's environment. However, they were discovered to have a hostility territorial behavior. They were attacking maintenance crews that were working on the Teratops Lodge, a second hotel where visitors could observe the pterosaurs at level flight. They would fold up their wings like bats and dive, striking workmen with such force, making them unconscious. Later in the novel, they were confused by the characters with the Pterodactylus, but Alan Grant recognized them as Cyrodactylus. According to Grant's description, they had a membranous wings that they would fold up and walk with and clawed forearms for grasping fish. That was precisely and ultimately put into Isla Sorna aviary scene in Jurassic Park 3. It is briefly unknown if they ultimately survived the Jurassic Park incident, but it is also likely as they may have escaped to the Napalm bombing and migrated to Isla Sorna, the nearby island. One of the main issues with this flying reptile is its unpredictability. The fact that Cyrodactylus eats fish does not make it less dangerous. In fact, the very first time we hear anything about the aviary called the Teratops Lodge, which is where the Cyrodactylus live, it's on a list of problems with the park. Mr. Arnold, the chief engineer, tells the park owner, John Hammond, that we've been forced to delay the Teratops Lodge and the aviary because the pterodactyls are so unpredictable. At that point in the story, we are not told what exactly is unpredictable. However, we know it must be something very serious since it has been delayed by construction of the living area in the aviary and since the aviary is not included on the garden tour at all. This means that it wasn't open for tours or any visits. 
The unpredictability of the Sierra Dactylus reinforces the reoccurring term and theme in the novel that the creators of the park, such as John Hammond and Dr. Wu, really had no idea what they started and what they would be getting into. They create and raise dinosaurs with little to no idea of how they will behave once they reach adulthood. This causes issue throughout the novel, including delays in construction caused by Cyrodactyl. Much later in the novel, we finally find out what unpredictable actually means. Hammond and Dr. Ian Malcolm, a mathematician included on the tour, are discussing the aviary and the reason it wasn't included on the guided tour. It turns out that the Cyrodactylus are extremely territorial. They fight amongst themselves for territory and they attack other animals or even people that come into the aviary. Hammond tells Malcolm about the attacks the workmen have experienced when attempting to build the aviary. He says that the dactyls glide to the top of the aviary, fold up their wings, and dive. A 30-pound animal will strike a man on the ground like a ton of bricks. During the chapter on the raft, we see this territoriality in action when Dr. Grant and the kids go through the aviary. They are on a raft on the jungle river in an attempt to get back to the base more quickly. The river goes through the aviary, and since they have not been warned about the Cyrodactylus paddock, they stop and get out of their raft to look around and to take a quick break. Very soon after they arrive, the Cyrodactylus begin dive-bombing them just as Hammond described them. They bite Lex and grab her arms, trying to pull her up, but thankfully, Dr. Grant gets them back to the boat and out of danger before any serious injuries occur. So guys, thank you for watching my video and please let me know down in the comments if you think that the Sierra Dactylus is a special and unique addition to Jurassic Park and should have made an appearance in the movies or if you think that this dinosaur is very weak and very useless so it's a great idea that we don't see it anywhere in the Jurassic Park franchise. I would love to hear your opinions down in the comments below. Either way, thank you for watching my video once again, and I'll see you next time. Take it easy and bye-bye.